All right, guys, we got some breaking news to get to you. It's Wednesday, October the 23rd. Uh, Russia is hosting uh, with Vladimir Putin the BRICS summit meeting. Uh, this will include 36 countries that will be present, uh, including 20 heads of state. And de dollarization is the main focus. We're going to talk about that today in today's quick update. Let's get after it. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, guys, welcome to the program. Um, we've got a lot of, we've got a few things we want to cover, uh, a lot of information. We're going to do these in two segments uh, today uh, on this 2 p.m. Eastern hour update. Uh, I want to give you, I want to get you up to par with what's going on in, with Russia, why this is important, uh, and how this could be a, a part of a larger uh, more concerning event that's ch that's shaping up across the world globally. Um, but again, be sure to tune in uh, tonight as well at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on the same channel, same place, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I want to show you this headline right here. BRICS Summit kicks off tomorrow, uh, which again, this was uh, posted on October the 21st. Today is the 23rd, so this meeting is well underway. Um, it is being hosted by Vladimir Putin in Russia uh, 36 countries are present, including 20 heads of state, and de-dollarization is on everyone's mind. The report indi indi indicates that everything is ready for the opening of the BRICS summit. Again, this kicked off yesterday in Kazan, Russia, uh, where Vlad Vladimir Putin uh, will uh, be an will have an opportunity, excuse me, to personally engage with multiple world leaders, including China's Xi Jinping, uh, India's leader, Turkey's leader. And Iran's again. We're talking about China, India, Turkey, and Iran. The multipolarity is on, and de-dollarization is on everyone's mind. Here is another headline. This is from Barron's multipolar world order forming at BRICS summit, an irreversible. They're calling this an irreversible multipolar world order is being formed before our very eyes with with President Vladimir Putin stating Wednesday at the opening at the BRICS summit in central Russian city of Kazan. The process of forming a multipolar world order is underway, a dynamic and irreversible process. Uh, Putin told gathered leaders from countries, including India and China, at the official opening of the summit. And we've got a little bit of video on this, too, as well, so check this out. President Vladimir Putin is hosting a gathering of world leaders for the BRICS summit of emerging economies today. BRICS for those emerging economies. It comes amid Western sanctions and an international arrest warrant following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. CBS News foreign correspondent Ian Lee is following the summit and he joins us now from London to discuss. Uh, so Ian, uh, for people who may not know what BRICS stands for and what the summit is, why is it important for Vladimir Putin? Hi, Vlad. Yeah, the BRICS, which stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, is presented as a counter to the Western-led world. In recent years, it's expanded to Egypt, Iran, Ethiopia, and the UAE. Twenty world leaders in total are descending on the Russian city of Kazan for the summit. It's seen by the— Now, I want to I'm gonna pause this for a second and interject something here that I think is interesting. Again, it originally started out with— uh, what B R I C S five five nations again uh, Brazil Russia India China and South Africa okay but it's expanded as he said here so now you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten you now you have ten all involved here ten nations I find this very intriguing. Um, and I'm going to explain why in just a moment, because I want to go back to this video, because if we take you too far off of a rabbit trail, we'll get tied up. And I want to I want to uh, I just wanted to highlight that for a moment. So I want to bring back up the video. So, again, as you can see here in this graph that he's got here, the original members, Russia, China, India, Brazil and South Africa. These were the original five. But now it's expanding. And we if we count all of these, 
we have 10. This is very significant, and I'll show you why here in just a little bit. Kremlin as sending the message that attempts by the West to isolate President Vladimir Putin over his invasion of Ukraine have failed. Moscow is touting this as the largest foreign policy event the country has ever hosted. The Russian president hopes to use the summit to convince members to adopt an alternative to the dollar for global payments. BRICS. Okay, did you hear what he just said there? When you've got, again, all of these nations coming together with a unified global effort and agenda to remove the U.S. dollar as the dominant currency. This is, a, this is huge news, guys, and I believe this is all tying in uh, to a larger global affair that's going to be that's already unfolding. And again, I don't want to get into that on this segment, but I'm telling you, it appears that uh, that nations are taking sides. You've got you've got North Korean troops in Russia, or excuse me, in Ukraine. That is being with on alongside Russian troops, and now South Korea is now um, dis, uh, is now deploying troops as well. So you, you there's now sides forming. And what many are worried and concerned that we could be looking at a, a potential to be World War III. And now you have this collaboration of nations coming together in Russia, hosted by Putin, with de-dollarization on the mind and on the agenda. Nations account for 45% of the global population and about 28% of the world economy. And there is interest in other countries joining the group. Moscow claims about 30 want to join or seek closer ties. Vlad? Wow, that's huge. 30. Okay. 30 nations forming a, co a complete collaboration, again, to completely remove the Western power and its influence. So, Ian, presumably Putin will be looking to project an image of unity among those BRIC members, but are you hearing that that's actually the case? Yeah, so on a bilateral basis, there could be the forging of closer ties. For instance, Russia and India have long held close relations. But the larger the BRICS becomes, the more it appears less like its namesake and more like a house built out of straw. First off, there are countries in the club that have major rivalries. China and India have had deadly border clashes in recent years, although they've tried to play those down. But Beijing is also trying to push its influence into the Indian Ocean, which Delhi is concerned about. Then you have Egypt and Ethiopia. Tensions between those two countries have been growing over the use of Nile River water. Saudi Arabia is looking to potentially join, but it's had a violent rivalry with member Iran. Then there are countries that don't want to be antagonistic with the West, namely India, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, so there are a lot of economic and political hurdles the club faces. So getting unison among the members, especially as it expands, will likely be more difficult. All right, according to the Gateway Pundit, this alliance is a representative of the global South and is a real threat to the world order instituted by the Western powers after World War II. Initially, the group was formed by, again, Br Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, but is now rapidly expanded. Uh, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia have all joined since January. Turkey, Azerbaijan and Malaysia also formally applied, along with a, a, a rather large number of other countries who have expressed a desire to join. As you heard in the video, Russia sees the meeting as a great success. 36 countries confirm participation, and of those, more than 20 will send heads of state. Putin will hold around 20 bilateral meetings in the largest foreign policy event ever held again on Russian soil. For many participants, the summit is a chance to amplify their voices and narratives. Now, keep in mind, guys, one of the main agendas of this meeting, this collaboration of nations, is to, again, to polarize America, to remove them as the dominance, um, especially when it comes to currency exchange. Now, look at this. This, again, this is from uh, the Gateway Pundit, a, quote, new payment system project is on the works that wants to be an alternative to the global banking messages net, messaging network swift 
allowing countries countries to settle their transaction and national currencies. Quote, the Russian idea is that if you create a platform where there is China, Russia, India, and Brazil, and Saudi Arabia, many countries that are vital partners for the U.S., the U.S. will not be ready to go after this platform and sanction it. Russia will also sign a, quote, strategic partnership treaty with Iran. L guys, let me know what you think about this. Uh, let me know in the comment section below in the chat. Also, can you do me a favor? Hit that like button. This helps eyes get on to these programs. Also, do it, go a step further. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification and be notified of what we're doing here. Here's another angle to this. This is from Bloomberg. President Vladimir Putin is playing host to Russia's largest gathering of world leaders since the invasion of Ukraine. Um, he's using this uh, to show the U.S. and its allies that he has no para. With Russian troops advancing in eastern Ukraine and evidence of growing war fatigue among some of, some of Kiev's allies, the Kremlin is seizing its opportunity to cast Putin as standing up to the West and attempting to, quote, reshape the global order. The U.S. and its group of seven partners dismissed the argument, though it's a message that resonates with some countries as the, quote, of the emerging world I'm going to scroll down here and read this quote. BRICS expansion is a quote, clear sign that the global balance of power is shifting. Wow. Interesting terminology there. <clears throat> this was from Alicia Garcia Hero, a Kong, a Hong Kong based ec economist who's a senior research fellow at the, at the Bruegel think tank. But the future of the grouping is uncertain given its heavy economic dependence on China and the deteriorating sentiment towards China among its members. So what do you think, guys? Is this going to hold together? Are they? Is Russia going to be able to pull this off? Is Putin going to be able to to uh, uh, to merge uh, over thirty countries together with a one unified global intent and agenda to bring down the West? Um, I, I want to bring this back. Remember, in this article from the Gateway Pundit, it said, "quote A new payment system project is on is on the works, and it wants to be an alternative to the global messaging network." Swift. I did find this. And I found this to be interesting. I want to share this with you. Here's the headline, quote, Project Nexus. Are we on the verge of a, quote, instant global payments revolution? And what's being called a international RTP solution it could be a game changer for cross-border payments. So are we looking, are we looking at the technology or the, or, uh, are these, the system that will, they will use or they'll implement real-time payment Solutions such as Brazil's PIX and India's UPI seem to have all, uh, accelerated the future, creating seamless, cost-effective, and user-friendly money transfer systems in many countries. In contrast, the market for cross-border payments is still dominated by traditional financial institutions involving complex, costly, and time-consuming process. Sending money abroad can take days as funds must flow through multiple financial institutions before reaching their destination and fees in some cases exceed 10% of the transfer amount. So what this, um, it remains unclear which system will emerge as the solution to the sector's pain points, but the Nexus project is undoubtedly the front runner. S uh, spearheaded by the Bank for International Settlements Innovation Hub, this is B-I-S-I-H, Nexus aims to create an international instant payment solution by establishing a pathway to connect the domestic real-time payment networks. Again, so the, the emphasis here, guys, is, again, just like this article stated, they are in the works of creating a new payment system project where in which uh, countries can settle transactions and national currencies. Uh, and the whole purpose of this, don't miss this, is to... Uh, skirt around U.S. sanctions. They want to do this before U.S. sanctions uh, hits them and, and causes uh, problems for them to not be able to do these transactions. Now, I want to I want to point this out as a, just a point of interest. Uh, I don't want to be definitive or dogmatic about this and say it's absolute, but I do find it intriguing that right now there is 10 nations that are all on board with this, uh, 10 nations. Now, the reason why this is interesting to me is because if, if you know your Bible, this will, say, this will be familiar to you. There was a great image that Nebuchadnezzar saw that Daniel interpreted, and he told him it was a cessation of empires that would go from the head all the way down to the two feet and ten toes. There is, uh, 
there was 10 toes mentioned there. And it says there'll be partly iron and partly clay. Some have speculated the, this will be a mixture of Western and Eastern empires. Uh, and they point out that this could be five uh, of five that represent democracy and five that represent uh, these are Muslim nations. So you're getting five from the West, five from the East. Others, and, and I don't want to get in, off into this tangent uh, and this rabbit trail, but others have also saw that this could, it could potentially uh, represent a kingdom or a, um, I should say, a collaboration of nations, these 10 kingdoms that will be made up of machine and man. This is where the whole um, transhumanism and cyborgs come into play. We've done a whole podcast on that, so I don't want to get into that note. I just want to focus on these 10 toes, because when you go to Revelation 17, I'll pull this up so you can read along with me. Revelation 17, John uh, saw 10 horns uh, that will rise in the last days. Right here in verse uh, Revelation 17, 12, uh, the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind. That's This is interesting. And they will give their power and authority to the beast. So, so let me break this down to you. John saw 10 kings in the last days that will will they will align themselves with the Antichrist. That's what the Bible says. In one hour's time, these 10 kings will unify with the Antichrist and they are of one mind and they will surrender their sovereignty and their power over to the Antichrist in one hour's time. So I thought that was very interesting because what we're kind of seeing, and I'm not saying that Putin's the Antichrist and I'm not saying that the 10 kings uh, are these 10 bricks nations forming, but what I'm saying is, you can see the prelude. We're getting the previews, guys, the snapshots of biblical prophecy for me. Because have you ever read these things and you wonder how in the world could this happen? How how can we get to a point where you've got one man that's rising to power in the Middle East, in Jerusalem, and you've got 10 kings that have no kingdom as of yet, but they surrender their sovereignty of their nations and their authority over to the Antichrist, and he forms an alliance with one mind and one purpose. And again, uh, quoting the reports here, Putin is again hosting this BRICS summit with one mind and one accord, if you would, if I could use this, with one gl global unified agenda, and that is to bring down the West and unify the East. So this is very interesting because it does have biblical repercussions. Uh, it, it has these ramifications to it because we're seeing the stepping stones leading up to this. So again, guys, don't forget tonight, because um, uh, I want to get into a lot more, but I want to do that. I want to save that for our 8 p.m. Eastern broadcast tonight. I want to show you how our, we could literally be seeing four major global wars all forming at one time. And we're, we're going to cover all this tonight. I'm going to show you how nations are taking sides and it and some experts are concerned that we are very well seeing World War Three forming right before our very eyes. So don't forget tonight, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, be sure to be a part of that. And guys, if you've not yet downloaded our free app, I want to encourage you to do that. Pick it up today. It's on Apple and Android devices. Download it today. Hit yes to push notifications. You're going to be squared away. Going to have every update right there at your fingertips, uh, breaking news, prophecy updates, uh, equipping messages. By the way, we're going to have some equipping messages coming up tomorrow. I know some of you, you love the information, but you love when we teach and equip. Because uh, um, And we're going to do that. We're going to have some of that stuff tomorrow. But we just wanted to get you some of this breaking news out here again. Um, it looks like Putin is um, is is on the move. You know, he's he's sending a signal to the West that you uh, you you think you've got me defeated, but you you don't. He is now recruiting North Korean troops. South Korea is getting involved. It's becoming an absolute mess. And this doesn't even include, guys, what's already happening in the Middle East with Israel and Iran. And again, we're going to cover all that tonight. So you don't want to miss that. Guys, again, please help me out. Hit that like button. 
hit that uh, hit that bell notification, subscribe uh, to our channel. We'd appreciate it. And and also speaking of, uh, we'd appreciate if you if you guys prayed about becoming a monthly partner. Uh, you can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app or through the website. Um, if you're watching by Rum or YouTube, excuse me, uh, up at the top, it's pinned where it says support. You can click there or you can do check your money order in time headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. That's going to be our mailing address. Again, we appreciate all of our all of our supporters and our partners of our ministry because we are a partner supported ministry and partner operated ministry. We we don't uh, none of. Anything we do is not, we don't have a cost on it. We, we don't sell merchandise. We don't sell our app. Our website does not have a subscription fee. Our messages are free. Podcasts are free. Everything is free. Uh, we want to bless you with the information, the revelation. We want to equip you. And, but we always say, if you're blessed, you're informed, you're equipped by our, our uh, ministry, then you pray and, have, uh, and do what the Lord would have you to do. So, guys, we're going to sign off for this afternoon. But we'll be right back here tonight, Lord willing, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And we got a lot to cover tonight as well. So we'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.